It's a beach day. Well, beach morning. We're back in the same beach as before. It's really, really quiet today. And we've rented these um, chairs. Some people prefer to stay in the shade. Some of us want to tan. And it's only 40k um, to get onto the bench. So, 40k for the whole day. So it's really, really good. So just go chill out here for a bit until we decide to go by our hill. Hi guys, it's me again, back on the voiceover. Um, so unfortunately that first part at the beach was all I had in terms of audio. Some of you might know I have had mic issues, um, so sadly I lost a lot of the audio for this trip. But someone left a comment in my last video asking if I could um, do a bit more voiceover, which I'm happy to do. So you just saw us um, get off um, a van ride. We were in the van that our hotel helped us to book, um, which took us from central Da Nang over to Banai Hills, which was our kind of main attraction for the day. Um, and yeah, we've just arrived at the kind of uh, car park drop-off area to then go and buy tickets for this cable car. Um, which was such a cool experience, I have to tell you about it in a second. But you can see we got a whole cable car for our little party of eight, which was perfect. We didn't have to share with anyone. Um, and yeah, we were all just kind of pretty amazed. Um, Simon's trying to open the window there, but actually it's air conditioned, so it's amazing. You can see it's a bit of a bumpy start, so a bit um, scary, but actually a really smooth ride overall considering how quickly we were ascending that mountain. Um, this um, cable car actually holds loads of Guinness world records, including the longest gap, heaviest cable and the greatest change in elevation for a cable car, which is very, very impressive. But simply speaking, it's just known as the highest and longest cable car system in the world. And the ride itself was about 17 minutes total, um, which was, I liked that because it meant that it wasn't a bit much of a rush and we got to really enjoy the view around us. You can see that the windows are massive and the ceilings actually for this cable car are really high above us. You can see there's so much space above our heads. Um, it is a bit scary uh, for those of you who don't like heights you might not enjoy just how panoramic the views are um, luckily the floor is not glass or clear otherwise I think that would have been a bit too much you can see we're properly in the clouds here we're going very very high and I know some of the other packages that they offer just for this ride include kind of a romantic cable car ride for two and you can have like a dinner table set up in the middle <laughs> be a very quick meal at 7 minutes but you can make a very you know romantic setup candlelight dinner I thought that was quite an interesting option if you wanted to make your experience just a little bit more special so we arrive um, I'm raving about how cool that um, cable car experience was I think we all found it pretty uh, unique um, so actually the resort itself I didn't even say the name it's called Sunwild as you can see literally plastered everywhere and at the front of the park there's a real kind of Universal Studios inspired globe that you can take uh, photos in front of so this place is very uh, inspired by lots of different things French uh, theme park everything but anyway over to the absolute main attraction to this place which is the Golden um, Bridge where two stone hands coming out of the mountain looking like the hands of God um, are lifting this uh, golden thread uh, which is the bridge and it's such a unique fixture um, it really went very viral online it only opened in 2018 so quite a recent um, addition and here you can see we've got a sneaky sneaky drone flight it was so worth it we were told to put down the drone immediately um, but you know there wasn't too many people around so it was uh, you know pretty clear and I would say that this time of day is perfect to visit actually you can see how misty and just mysterious and just scenic and atmospheric the bridge felt at this time of day it was very close to kind of closing time for the bridge before sundown you can see the sun's already gone down and it leaves this really amazing glow you really feel like you're in the clouds here um, 
so yeah, it was around kind of quarter to five time. So I would say just before sunset, if you can, is a really good time to try and visit. You can see not that many people. Can you even see some little gaps where you could take photos? It's uh, pretty much impossible during the day and during peak season otherwise. So highly recommend that. And the fun doesn't end. You can see some more kind of stone uh, statues here and another hand that uh, everyone was kind of taking pictures of. Ted was just trying to jump and touch the finger and he did not. He is not that tall. <laughs> and these guys are doing a kind of leaning tower of Pisa style shot. So this was around 10 minutes after we'd done walking the bridge. As you can see, it's very twinkly, very pretty, but it already gotten so dark in such a short period of time. So yeah, it's a very small window to get that misty um, kind of sundown experience. So we went off in search of food, which was included in our ticket. Um, so we could get this kind of buffet and here, so you can see at the bottom corner, I've linked this creepy kind of dark, um, corridor and uh, walkway that we had to get through to get to this spot um, a lot of the park was already closed because uh, of how late it was getting after sundown so it was very eerily quiet like no signs no people no lights we walked through this kind of abandoned looking arcade it was open everything was open but there was just not really any people and the kind of French village um, part to this which was also you know very quiet not really any people so it all just felt a little bit kind of dystopian and abandoned until we got to this kind of little hall where in the beginning you can see on the stage there were just loads of kind of foreign artists stage performers um, you do get the feeling here that it's really trying to be kind of uh, European and Western influenced but obviously not <laughs> not quite but either way was pretty impressed by the food selection there's lots to choose from and exactly what we needed and here sadly the day has come where we now have to leave Min House which is the hotel we were staying at in Da Nang we made so many uh, fun memories here it really felt like a home rather than a hotel like a I like a homestay, a very cushy, fancy one, but um, such an amazing place. I really couldn't recommend it highly enough. You get free breakfast every morning, so it's kind of a continental western, and then they also offer one kind of um, soup noodle dish uh, made by the chef every day um, by request. So you could have a far, could have a mi quang, or our last breakfast of this day was a bun boe, which I hadn't actually eaten at all this trip. So I was really happy and it was absolutely delicious. The chef is amazing and she is such a lovely woman as well. Um, we really wanted to make sure to tell her that we really loved her food. And luckily we had Tuan and Ted who can uh, translate for us and she actually cried she was really happy to have us and she said that because often the um, guests don't stay for such long periods of time uh, she said it felt like we were like a mini family which is super sweet she made me cry <laughs> and um, it's just the kind of little things that people do on your trip that really make it special and memorable so obviously this was the next day. We hadn't planned very much of an itinerary for this day. Um, so we were gonna keep it, you know, very simple, take it slow and start off the morning with a um, massage. <laughs> so we had a bit of a spa day. We went to a nearby um, kind of massage parlor and all of us had a really lovely, kind of almost a deep tissue massage. The massages they do in Vietnam are pretty harsh very um, tough firmness so if you are soft and gentle then please make sure to mention to your masseuse and I don't know about where you're from but where we are in the UK it's very expensive to get any kind of spa treatment massages are so expensive so we really took advantage over here in Vietnam where it's a lot more affordable and really great massages at that as well so the spa days were rolling in 
here I was talking to Simon and Winnie about their massage because over in Hanoi in our last um, massage how many times am I going to say massage I'm so sorry he didn't have the best experience his masseuse wasn't the greatest so he said that this one was a redeeming um, experience which is good I'm glad so being where we are by the coast of course we had to make our last meal a seafood meal for lunch um, if you recognize it actually we came here two nights ago for our dinner and here we've arrived at lunch where we weren't even sure if there were um, open or not but they are super empty but open for lunch and over here um, the guys are just picking out their you know choice of fish Simon has no idea what's going on he can't speak Vietnamese neither can I neither can Pete but we're all just hanging around I don't love um, fish they kind of freak me out a little bit so I think Ted took the camera here to record but obviously they just kind of take it fresh he's getting some prawns and then they weigh it over by the scale and then they cook it however you want pretty much um, so you can see here that group of fish we asked for it fried and actually it looked petrifying at the end the scales are all properly deep fried um, but you know popular choices are with chili with garlic um, deep fried steamed however you want it it's delicious and fresh and it was super sad but we then had to say bye to Simon and Winnie who were returning to Hong Kong um, and kind of finishing up their trip with us which was super sad but it was amazing having them with us it was such a great portion of the trip to have them join us on as well and then yeah full of goodbyes goodbye to Min House and we are heading to the airport going down to Saigon super exciting but yeah bye Da Nang and thanks for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys.